Impact Driven Entrepreneur, episode number 34. Today, we're going to be talking all about how to hire a supportive and lasting team. Welcome to the Impact Driven Entrepreneur, the podcast that helps you expand your reach and convert that reach into clients so you can lead your tribe with confidence and create change in the world while living the life you desire. And now your host, certified business coach and consultant, Mariana Ruiz. Want to increase your sales without so much hustle? Oh my gosh. Let's talk about doing funnels. Funnels are like the thing right now, but whether it's challenge, a tripwire, a webinar, or even getting people on the phone, guess what? All of that is the same. It's a sales process and what some people call funnels, okay? And I wanna help you with your sales process because here's the thing, when you can really master and improve that process, you will get more sales in your business. Normally inside of my six month coaching program, what I do is I actually look at everything that my clients do. I look at all of their copy, all of their emails, everything that they're doing inside of a launch or outside of a launch. And really, I wanna bring that element to a small intensive for you. So what I wanna do is offer you the opportunity for me to look at all of your emails, all of your copy, whether it's a challenge, a funnel, a webinar, or a sales call, I will actually listen to your sales call. Yeah, you heard that, right? Okay, so in order to get this amazing offer, it's called a funnel intensive. You can find it at impactdrivenentrepreneur.com slash work with me. You can purchase there right away, or if you wanna get on the phone and just make sure it's a good fit for both of us, I'd be happy to chat with you. Let's optimize that sales process so that you can start generating more sales in your business without the grind. Hey there, and welcome back to the Impact Driven Entrepreneur. Today, we are going to be talking about how to hire a rock star team member that serves your business and sticks around. So uh, stick with me. Uh, We are going to be talking about this topic. I'm really passionate about this because from day one in this business and even early, early on in my health coaching business, which was the business online business that I had before this, I have had somebody helping me. And I tell you that with full transparency and also just sharing with you that like, even though that's been, oh gosh, probably four or five, yeah, four years now, I still don't feel like I'm an expert at, you know, hiring and, you know, all of this. And yet I do have that experience under my belt. So if you're hiring your first few hires, like, you know, your first VA, you know, your first project manager, I think you will find this training to be really, really helpful. And as my reason for sharing that, like, I still don't feel like an expert at this is because I'm still honestly learning how to best delegate and how to best keep my team really engaged and how to best manage my team. As I grow in 2018, this is going to be something that I'm going to be leaning more into. I'm getting, you know, support and training around this with my coach. And as I continue to grow in this area, I promise you that I will bring you more and more teachings on this and more and more trainings on this. So the first thing I want to just share is that I'm very much, um, I have experience under my belt and I very much still feel like this is an area of growth for me. Um, But if you are in those earlier stages, hiring your first, you know, VA, project manager, support team of any kind, like I have a podcast editor who's an amazing, amazing person. He's been on my team now with my podcast editing since day, you know, not day one of the podcast, but like month one of the podcast. Okay. Um, So I feel really good about teaching this in some ways. And in some ways, I still feel like I'm really just learning it myself. But what I can tell you is exactly what I've done to be able to get people like that who have stuck around. And I've had my current VA for just about two years. So I think that's a lot to be said for the online space. So let's get into what you can do and how to go about this. I basically have about eight steps that you're going to do. And so let's dig right in. Number one, I want to first start with what are the signs that you actually need a team member? And is it stat? You know, I used to be a nurse, so I had to use some <laughs> um, some medical terms in there. Uh, essentially, what I'm saying here is a lot of times people are like, 
I need a team member, but I also can't afford it. But I also don't think I need one because I'm not really sure and I don't know what I would give them. So I'm just not going to hire. And I think that's a mistake. Um, and it's definitely one that I made in the very, very beginning because there is nothing like having somebody that helps you in your business. I tell you this with love and just from my experience. Are you ready? So what are the signs? The signs are that you are having feast and famine cycles in your business, meaning you're the only one doing sales, you're the only one doing marketing. And so then what happens is you go into sales and marketing mode when you've hit a low in your income. And then you go into service mode because you've all either sold out or almost sold out all of your programs. And then you go into panic when those contracts end and then you go back into selling mode. If you're experiencing this at any level in your business, it is time to get some help around the marketing and sales. And and I don't mean a coach that can teach you what to do because it seems like you know what, what to do. You might need some support on that. But what happens is you need support on somebody that can do that while you're in those lows. While you're serving your people, you can actually get the support you need in selling and marketing so that it stays consistent even when you're serving your clients. Okay, that is the key. So that is one sign that you might need to hire a team member stat. Another sign is that you are doing everything in your business, meaning, you know, maybe you're you're a consultant or a coach or do some sort of work where maybe you're getting paid like by your clients, like maybe you get paid like 200 or 300 or $400 an hour from your clients. However, you're the only one doing anything. So that means like you might be doing every image on Canva that takes you an hour a week. And so essentially what you're doing is you're paying somebody one, two, three, or $400 an hour to do those Canva images. And would you really pay somebody that? And most likely the answer is no. And so what happens is if we're busy doing that, we aren't doing more of the things that can generate higher income for you. So if that's happening to you, then it's time you you hire somebody. And the good thing is here, guys, you don't have to hire somebody as a full-time employee, not even as a part-time employee. They can come in as a contractor where they're working very few hours for you. That's how I got started. Um, when I was a health coach, I had somebody, I think he was working maybe like three to five hours a week. That was it. Like it was so little. And yet it gave me the wiggle room and the brain space to do stuff that I would have not been able to do. Okay. So I want to just share that with you. Uh, and you might be feeling like you are either near burnout or like something has to give, meaning like you're just feeling like you're pulled in 20 different directions and just like it, it's starting to not feel great in your business as you're getting clients. So then the question might be, okay, if I don't have any clients, do I need somebody? And I think that the, it varies per person, meaning do you also have a full-time job? Do you also have children? When I started my first business as a health coach, I had children and a full-time job. And so, yes, I had uh, a team member when I only had one client. Yes, I did. <laughs> um, but that also meant I had five hours you know, up to five hours a week of extra time on my business that I could not physically give to my business at that time. So it did eventually pay off. So what I want you to hear from that is there is no hard and fast rule. It kind of just depends on each individual person. But if you're feeling like you're near burnout or that is just starting to feel like you can't give to your business what needs to be done, um, then I would consider this as well. Okay, so let's step into the CEO mindset. I talked about this a little bit in the last section, but basically what you want to do is when you're bringing somebody on, it's important that you realize the power of this, meaning it's going to allow you to focus on things that are in your zone of genius. 
that term is a, you know, that can be a little bit of a, like, I don't know, not fancy, but like overused term sometimes. But essentially that concept comes from the book, The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. It's an amazing book. Um, and what he says is there are things that you can do that you are the best at and you are amazing and incredible and it is what lights you up and it makes you feel good. And there are a lot of things that we do just because we are okay at them or we can learn them, you know, we're fast at learning them. Those are, you know, other zones that are not genius zone. I think it's like proficiency or something like that. And so what ends up happening is that if we're working on those zones, we have less energy and less time to spend on our genius zone. And so for us to grow, if we spend more, more time in genius zone, we grow faster and we grow in a way that also feels lighter for us because we're not drudging through all the tasks, okay? I want to also encourage you to think about the possibility, and I say this with love because I totally struggled with this, is that the possibility that there are people that might be doing, able to do something better than you. Meaning, if you were to get uh, uh, somebody to write your copy, right, like, and they were an excellent copywriter, wouldn't it be true that they were better at writing your copy than you? And for some of us, this might be hard to really come to the terms with. I know for me, this has been a real one, especially around copywriting, because I really struggle with outsourcing my voice um, and what I say. However, the truth is there are some excellent copywriters out there that are better than me at writing my voice, <laughs> right? So um, we have to come to grips with that. And I'm not saying you have to hire a copywriter, but I'm just giving that as an extreme example. And so if somebody's really great at tech, right, or they're great at websites, like they can do it in two seconds and it's going to take you hours of Googling and trying to figure it out to do the same thing, okay? Um, and next about the CEO mindset, I want to say like, give your people more than just the tactical to-dos so that you get a positive ROI on your investment so that you're not paying yourself plus them and then therefore having to increase the sales that you yourself are responsible for generating is going to continue to grow as your team grows. And the reason I say that is because I had that moment. I had that moment where I had several people that I was having to, uh, pay and therefore I had to generate all the income to pay for not only myself but also them and that is a very um, draining place to be and so if you're experiencing burnout it could be because of this or it could be because of version of this right meaning like you're you're the only one responsible for anything in your business that that is very heavy Okay, and so what you can do is start to delegate some um, income producing activities to your team members so that they're actually generating a positive ROI by doing just their job. Okay, and this is that movement that I said that in the beginning that I'm working on in my business. This is the movement that we're creating in my business. Everyone in my business is responsible for producing a positive ROI. And so yes, that means that I must give them things that actually give a positive ROI. But not only that, but they have to actually execute on that and, and get that positive ROI. So it's both of us working together. And it really and truly feels more like a team effort than like me paying for everybody and moving this huge ship. Okay, because that's how I felt before. So Next, I want you to decide on what you're going to outsource first to your team member. This is before you even hire anybody. So what you're going to do is you're going to create a job description. The job description is um, essentially the document that says what they're responsible for. And how I have done this is I look at the things, I take a log in an inventory of everything that I'm doing every single day for a week. Um, and then if I have some random things, I will just keep, I, 
I keep a note in Trello, in my Trello board of my weekly board. I'll just keep a note there of like things I do maybe once a month or once every other month that like come up that I don't necessarily need to be doing. Um, so what I'll do is I'll take that one week um, inventory. And if you want me to help you walk you through that, I have a download from a previous podcast episode that was a content upgrade. Um, just go to impactdrivenentrepreneur.com slash download three, all one word, download three, and three is the number, download three. Um, and you can get your um, my time-saving system, and basically that's what we do. We take an inventory of everything you're doing, and then at the end of the week, we look at it and say, okay, how can we improve this and get you doing more of the money-making activities? Um, what that also means is that if you're doing things that are, you know, like let's say you charge $200 an hour for a consultation and you're doing a lot of things that are you wouldn't be willing to pay somebody $200 an hour for you would start to add those things to the potential job description okay um next you would actually create the job description and the job description it's important like when you do this and this is that shift I've been making currently here with like having tacticals to do's versus having goals. And so in the job description, I actually have goals for the person and the job description is listed with like the top goals and the top things that I care the most about, which are the money-making activities at the top of the job description. And then moving down, they are less and less important to me, okay? Because they're less likely to generate money for the business. So that's how I would do that. Um, and how I've been doing and working on this. And um, I actually have a few different job descriptions that I created in my business and, and a few different roles that are upcoming, like once we uh, continue to grow. So you might find that. You might find that like the job might evolve or change as you grow and that's totally okay. I just want to sh share that here for a moment because you're a growing business, you have a growing business. And so it's normal and natural that the job description will slightly change and that, you know, if the person's doing great there, then maybe they can get advanced to a little bit more responsibility a year down the road, right? Or things can change for that person. So don't look at the job description as like set in stone, the three things are going to do like no, it's more like a working document. And as your business grows and expands and your team grows and expands, you can continue to um, alter that, okay? Um, number four is start to set up processes for your team. So what I do um, is, and this is what we've done for a long time. I just changed the way I do it. So what we do is like, if it's something really basic or really tactical, like, uploading a post to WordPress, right? What I will do is I'll do a video walkthrough, like a screen share. And I, I used to use Screencast, but now I use Loom. One of my clients told me about it and I love it. It's called loom.com. Just go to loom.com and it saves your little video snippets and you can actually write text underneath it. And it's all saved to um, the cloud. So or on a website or whatever. So it doesn't take up space on your computer. Like there's just so many pauses about it. So anyways, it's free, go do it. Uh, <laughs> and so basically I will create the video screen show, screen flow, and then um, what I'll have the person do. So like, let's say it's their first week, they're ready to go. And this is the task I'm gonna uh, have them do. So I'll share with them the Loom video and then I'll have them create a process for it. So I will have them create a Google Doc that lists every step of the in the video that they just watched. That way, and we are going to be talking more about how to find them and what to do in the first week, but this is just an example. I have them actually put the steps on a process for me in a Google Doc so that before they actually execute on the task, I can know that they understood all of the intricacies of that task. So what's great about this, like literally, if you're currently doing all your opt-ins 
for your business, you can create a process for opt-ins and you can just give that to a VA and never have to do an opt-in again. Okay. The day I realized that I was in love with this whole process thing. And so I don't do my opt-ins. My, my VA does. And he even knows how to add, you know, the Facebook pixel onto our, our pages and everything. Like it's all in there. And so I want to share this with you because this is such a powerful thing to do in your business. And then once that person can share with you what the process is before they go through it, you just go through it with them to make sure they got it. And if there's any discrepancies in how you actually normally do it and the process that they have put together, you can catch it before they've actually gone to do it. Yes, you want to also check their work once they do it, but this gives them like a trial that's like allows you to be really detail oriented if it's that type of task to make sure they've got every step. Okay. Next, how are you going to find this person? Right. I just shared with you what would be awesome. Right. But like, how could you find this person? Like, where are they coming from? So what I, um, what I've used before is things like onlinejobs.ph, um, that place, that site gives you people in the Philippines. Um, great. I've hired some great hires from there. One of my VAs has been with me for two years, found him there. Okay. Craigslist, another great place to find people. Um, and you can find people locally that way, which is great. Um, internships.com, uh, you know, if you're going to run it as an internship and not as a, it, you can also post entry level positions there, might I add, but if you're going to run it as an internship rather than a job, just check your your laws in your state. Um, I have a client who was trying to do that, and in her state, she couldn't hire an intern. So, but she could hire a paid intern, but she couldn't hire an intern for credit. So, anyways, side note. Um, and then Upwork.com, I found people there, and I've had clients find long-lasting VAs there as well. So, and then I don't want you to ever, 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 ever underestimate the power of your own community. So your friends, people in courses and programs you've taken together, um, people on Facebook, your actual community, your actual email list, your actual Facebook fans, those people can also connect you with or actually be people that can work really well in your business. Okay. Okay. And then I want you to use a multi-step approach in the hiring process. So what we do is I will have the job description in the job description that I post publicly. I will say something obscure that I want them to do. So I might have them use a very specific subject line in an email that they send to me. So if they submitted their application in a way that was not via email was not using the subject line, they're automatically re like taken away from the possible people that would be hired for the job. And the reason I do this is because, especially if you use um, you know, online jobs.ph or Upwork, you're gonna get a lot of applicants. Online jobs.ph, the time that I did that, I did um, a training for one of my, for some of my clients on it. And I literally had 90 something applications in 24 hours. And so how do you filter through that much without going crazy? And that is having a multi-step approach. And you do want to find the best person for you. And so this is another way to filter that because like I just said, right, creating an opt-in is a highly detail-oriented task. If you're not detail-oriented, you're not going to be able to do that job accurately. And having that job accurately is really important in your business because that's number one, the first way you get people into your business, right? But in other ways too, like um, there's just so many things that we do in online business that are highly detail oriented. So you want to look for that. And as a side note, you want to also look for, and I'm going to talk more about, you know, the interview, but like these kind of things that are more like personality traits, like detail oriented are more important than experience. And when I've coached clients on hiring team members, nine times out of the 10, the team members that don't work out 
are the team members that were hired because of their experience and the things they quote unquote knew. And I don't mean that in a demeaning way or in a mean way, but when you look for things that are unchangeable, like their work ethic and their ability to, you know, just go above and beyond or their detail orientedness, if that's a word. Um, But when you look for those things, you can't go wrong with that because you can always teach them how to use WordPress. You can always teach them how to use lead pages, right? Like, I honestly don't care if you've never opened up lead pages. If you know, if you're detail oriented, I know I can share a screen share with you and create a process and you will, you will get it in like a few minutes. Like I can just easily train you on that, but I can't train you to be detail oriented. Okay. So do you see the difference? And so Nine times out of 10, when I'm coaching clients and the the hire does not work out, it's because they weren't looking at the personality stuff and the, the stuff that are like, like this, that are non-tangible, right? So I want you to look for that and, and write that star it, all of it. Okay. Moving on. (laughs) Tangent. Um, okay. Moving on. So, uh, next we look at, um, Another thing that I do is I look at the strengths assessment. So I just really want to make sure that my people are working in their zone of genius, that they're working on their strengths. Um, And so what I do is I, if it's somebody that's going to be like a VA or a project manager or something, I'll do a strengths assessment or, and, or I will also do Myers-Briggs. I'm actually getting nerdy enough where like I start to know and see the patterns of what their Myers-Briggs might be. But that's also just me being a huge nerd. And it's an assessment that I absolutely adore. Um, So get comfortable with an assessment. It might not be strengths. It might not be Myers-Briggs. I have clients who use Colby and other ones. Um, Just get comfortable with one where you can start to like see it before they even take the assessment. That's essentially what I'm saying is get comfortable with an assessment that like you start to nerd out on it and like start to see it in people and start to think about people and and think about it people in that way, right? Like, so strengths assessment, like if they're, you know, great, you know, really creative, I start to really see where they are uh, in their strengths, right? Or Myers-Briggs, same kind of thing. Um, That will help you in so many ways that I can't even... I can't even begin to to share that with you, but that is helpful, okay? Also helps you in personal life. Okay, number six, onboarding your new team member. So let's say, uh, did I talk about the interview? Oh, no, okay, so let's talk about the interview now. Um, So once they pass like the detail-oriented test, so it might be like this very specific subject line. Um, another thing I might do in the job description is, and I've done before, things like send me your favorite YouTube video, right? Um, I did that for a video editor. Um, for podcast editor, I did something like send me what are your favorite podcasts to listen to. Um, and I really just wanted to make sure they're following directions more than anything. But I also want to kind of get to know a little bit about them, you know, like their personality and stuff, like who they are as a person, not like they're personality type. Okay. (laughs) That was confusing. Okay. Um, so essentially what I then do is, um, if they've, you know, gone through those, once you've gotten those handful of tests and steps, you'll see that you can pretty much, uh, whittle it down. Like about 90% of the applicants won't do these, which is really important. In, important for you to know because you might get discouraged if you're <laughs> deleting like 90% of people, but it's also really good because what then happens is that you get the the prospects that are most detail oriented, most, you know, direction, you know, great at following directions. And those are the people that are going to last in your business. And so when you get to that point, you're interviewing the top tier already. Okay, so then what I would do is I would interview them and I have a lot of questions that I ask them and I usually ask questions 
in terms of, you know, determining their work ethic and how they work and a lot of scenario type questions. I know when I was a nurse, those were the ones that we were asked the most because what they were testing us for is our critical thinking skills. And you want to do a similar thing, right? You don't want the person to come to you for every single thing. I have a family member who I considered having her come and um, nanny for me. And she is so insecure that like she asked me every little detail that I think if she if she was nannying for me, I would go bananas, okay? I want somebody who's more independent and somebody who is um, a critical thinker. And so those are the things I'm personally looking for. If you like the other way, that's totally fine. You know, you don't have to be with me on that. But what I want you to know is know yourself enough to know what are the things that are going to tick you off (laughs) so that you get somebody that's actually going to help you uh, in your business. Okay. Next. And so, and so basically design questions that are going to show you those answers, right? Are they the, the type of person that's going to take you off? Are they the type of person that's independent, right? Are they the type of person? Those are the questions you're going to ask. And that's going to be very individual to you. Meaning I used to give away like the questions I asked, but then what I noticed is like my clients weren't critically thinking in their business, what questions they should ask. And so this is how you would determine what questions you should ask. What is something that you must have in a person? What are character traits, traits about how they work? Um, What are things that are going to absolutely take you off? You got to know that about yourself and about the position that you want to fill. Because I can't tell you that. That's not my job. Like they're not going to be working for me. Does that make sense? Okay, (laughs) moving on. So onboarding your new team member. Let's say they pass all those tests, you whittle it down, you do maybe a handful of interviews and you pick one. Great. Now you're going to onboard them onto your team. What I have found is, um, number one, I didn't used to do a whole orientation and I think that was a mistake. And so I want to share with you, number one, you want to start with a general orientation of your business so that they fully get what you do, especially if you work online. This is key because our jobs can be so, um, I guess you can say like confusing to people who are not in the online space or so different from one online business to another. Just take it from me being a business coach and seeing a lot of different online businesses. So you want to make sure they get what you do and that they know what their role is within that. So for example, when I did uh, my last training with somebody, I did a company overview. I put it together on Trello as like a Trello board. So it had like mission, vision, values, and um, you know, our uh, ideal customer avatar and generally the programs that we sell and when we sell them, right? I taught them about launching and that like, it's not all the time, it's certain windows and like all that, right? Because they need to know that, right? It's not like Walmart where you can walk in any day and buy anything. They need to know that, okay? So what are the things they need to know about how your business runs and operates and how they fit into that, okay? Okay. Um, so then once you've oriented them, um, I give them their first assignment. So, uh, initially I've been meeting with the people on my team about one, two, three times a week, really depends on the week, like weeks of Christmas and all those holidays and stuff. I didn't really meet with them that much. Um, but on a regular week, we'll meet three times a week or two times a week, um, And so really like having some set meetings where you're coaching them, you're walking them through things, you're encouraging them, you're sharing with them what they're doing great, you're sharing them with them what they can improve. Like I look at these people as actually like almost like a coaching client um, because of how much I invest in into that relationship. Um, And so I, you know, if you're going to do that, 
I think that that is a, a huge shift for me that has helped me a lot in my retention and improving of the communication and the relationship. Um, I've also had like project managers before where we met like once a month or once a once every other week and that was never enough. And so meeting multiple times a week allows me to stay on track and allows my team member to stay on track and for me to really feel like at the end of the week, I want to feel like if I'm paying you, I know that you like what you've done, like I'm not like money's just not leaking out of my business, right? I know what you've done, I've known what you've been up to, I know what maybe you're going through personally, right? Like I want to feel amazing when I give you money at the end of the week. Okay? And so for me, meeting with them multiple times a week has helped me to do that and also made sure that we're getting stuff done uh, within the assigned period and that I'm getting that follow up and follow through. That was a, a big piece I was missing for a while is I would give them assignments, but then I wasn't following up. And so I wasn't sure if everything was done. Right now, how we have it, I meet with them in the beginning of the week, I meet with them at the end of the week, I know what's done, what's not done, and what we need to do to get it done the next week, or that last Friday, right? Like, whatever it is, depending on the urgency of the thing. Okay. Um, and so, uh, the last step is really this coaching and re regularly reviewing their progress, right? Once they're onboarded, once they're, they've learned their processes, they've been given their first few assignments. Oh, I didn't talk about the first assignment. I want to go back to that. So um, the first assignment, what has worked really, really well for us is having an assignment where, number one, it feels doable for them based on their experience. So if it's somebody who has zero experience with the online space at all ever, I'm not going to ask them to do an opt-in. If it's a VA who's done opt-ins before, they know what they're doing, maybe they just haven't used all the software we use, then they can go and do their opt-in as their first you know, assignment. But it also has to be something that they're feeling excited about. I found that that makes a huge difference. And so what I've done is uh, I've had people that have started and I give them something and they're not crazy about it and then they get discouraged and it just kind of changes their first impression of working at the business. And I don't want that for you. And so for me, what has worked really, really well is giving them an assignment that really lights them up and then give them other assignments that they're less excited about. So I will literally just ask them, what are you most excited about in this role? Like, you know, what are the things you're going to be doing? What is the one that you're like, oh my God, I can't wait to get to do that. Cool. Let's work it out so that you get that one first. That's how I come up with their first assignment. Um, and so that is um, about the first assignment. Simple but fun and also doable for them based on where they are in their life experience and their experience in general. Okay. Lastly is um, review progress. So um, my coaches two of my coaches have told me to do this. And the first time I didn't listen. And the second time I am listening. Okay. So essentially what I, what the culture needs to be, um, is a no surprises culture, meaning you have a, a culture in your business where if they're falling behind, you will know about it before it's too late. And if they're, not doing the job, you're not going to suddenly say, hey, what's going on here? You're not doing the job for the last six months. You're fired, right? So it's an equal, no surprises on both sides, meaning you're open and transparent with them and they're open and transparent with you. And again, that comes from those regular meetings. You, I've tried doing this, not doing the regular meetings, and it's very difficult. And that's why surprises happen. And so implementing the regular meetings has really helped our company culture to improve. Um, and I meet with each person individually at this point in my business. I think in the future, um, I will probably have more of like a team meeting. But right now, what is working is me doing a lot of the one-on-one -on -one coaching with my with my team. Um, 
and uh well okay let's just get really clear on this like people like the podcast editor he and I meet you know every once in a while but it it's not like he is doing um you know like you know following up with leads that's a very very different task than editing a podcast and so I want to share too here is like it's different depending on the type of role they have and and how they are, especially if they're a contractor in your business. Um, so just think critically <laughs> about the role and what is needed for meetings with you. But when my podcast editor and I meet, they are amazing meetings where it moves our podcast, it moves our business in a big way. Um, and we do those, you know, we've done a few of them. So it's, I, I guess you would probably break it down to, you know, every every couple quarters. It's not, you know, every every week or anything like that. But we are in constant communication back and forth. The other thing that's important too that I think um, you know, working as a Facebook ads person um in other businesses, what I noticed is like it's important for you to have clear uh communication with them. And let them know where you want to communicate with them on. So like if you love to communicate with people with your whole team on Trello, tell them that and say, I would like to communicate on Trello. Um, if you like Facebook Messenger, use Facebook Messenger, right? But there's just so many ways to communicate uh, with other people that like, it helps a lot if you have one place where you're going. Um, I know Slack is a really uh, popular thing. Uh, it's like a chat that you can use with people. We personally love Trello and it works for us. So we pretty much only use Trello. Um, and having that like clear designated place for communication helps you in a lot of ways. It helps you to number one, maintain communication, and number two, like not have to find that specific conversation if you have to go back and look at something. Because um, I know it being on other teams, it's I've seen this happen and it, and it can be frustrating where you're looking at like all your emails and you're looking on Facebook and you're looking at, you know, Trello and Asana for five different pieces of a conversation about a specific thing. And so it's just easier, you know, with so many platforms out there to have one place. And then with regard to no surprises, one last thing I want to say is, um, you know, doing reviews every so often. So it can be, you know, every six months, every year, whatever you decide is right for their role and how, how you run your business. Um, but having those reviews and letting them know that they are doing a good job if they are or what needs to change. Um, I know I met with one of my team members this morning and she was like, I am, I'm doing a good job. Like she had no idea. And it was just a reminder of how that simple af affirmation that they are doing a good job can make their satisfaction with the with the role and the job so much more satisfying and also um just helps them to feel really really good and it's you know free and we have access to it at any time right so just sharing that with you um as i am implementing and learning and doing this whole thing so if you have any questions um i do have some openings for one-on-one -on -one. this is a part of what i do with my coaching we work on marketing and sales and growing your team as well. Um, and I've had clients who have gone from being the solo entrepreneur that does everything to having multiple team members in their business and being able to generate a lot more revenue through their business because of that. So if you are looking for support in any of these areas, um, I do have some openings for one-on-one -on -one as well as group coaching. Um, but I really feel at this point, you know, that I'm going to place you where it is best for you, meaning I'm not going to put you in a group or in a one on one situation if that's not what will best serve you. So let's have a conversation. If you want to schedule a conversation with me, 
um, to see how I might be able to help you in your business. It's very customized. Um, just go to impactdrivenentrepreneur.com and click on the free consultation button at the top and we'll just see what uh, how I can best support you. So I hope you have an amazing, amazing day. Head on over to impactdrivenentrepreneur.com where you can find an arsenal of videos, blog posts, and previous podcast episodes to help you increase your profit and impact. Again, impactdrivenentrepreneur.com and click on blog. Enjoy. Enjoy.